So I get to open a new box. Now, one of the good things about this box is I'm building a server, and server needs storage. So, voila, storage. Eight terabytes of storage. Yep. Uh, yeah, we're gonna kind of dig back into the server and setting things up. Now, obviously, we're not going to do a tutorial on this. I, I don't know enough about this to try to walk somebody through this process. All I'm doing is trying to make sure that all the hardware is right, that the, the eight terabyte drive is going to go in without much of a problem or without a problem. So, you know, involved putting that in and everything, trying to get everything to come up, trying to configure everything and make sure that I've got dashboards and something working uh, for tutorials or something like that. There are plenty of people out there and I'll mention that again later in the video, I'm sure. But, um, there, there are a lot of people out there that can help get through all this part. I am not that one yet. Maybe I'll get to be that one. We'll see what happens. But in the meantime, I just want to make sure that this gets up, running, and that we've got everything put together, configured, and we can actually turn this into a server. So when last we left our server, uh, I was test fitting some things. I, I've got a full-size drive up here, two notebook drives in here. I've got the SSD that's here that currently has Windows, but that will change because we're going to put a different operating system on, and I've got a full-size hard drive behind. I only hooked up a few things just to make sure that things would work. I have to go through now and actually uh, format some drives, figure out what drives are going to fit, and of course the 8 terabyte is going to go in here. So that would be a pretty major deal. We're going to end up putting a drive in here that has TrueNAS scale on it because it's a Linux distribution or Linux capable. That means I can put Docker and, uh, Docker containers and stuff like that. And I will be able to access it remotely from, say, my sister's house or wherever I might be that I need to get, you know, get information, trade information, check the system and all that stuff. The other advantage to that is if I'm going ahead and uh, using some Docker containers or putting a, uh, a Linux system on here, I, I can also check the health of this system from here or anywhere else. So that would be a, a pretty, pretty big advantage as well. So I'll work on that. I don't know how much of that's going to get on tape or how much of that's going to get on video. But uh, yeah, I'll take you guys along for at least part of the ride. We'll make what I hope will be an interesting video out of it. And uh, yeah, so come along with me. All right, so we've done a little rearranging. We've done a little cleanup. I've got what is now going to be my TrueNAS boot drive there. There's an 8 terabyte drive right here. There are two 1 terabyte notebook drives in here. And we're going to set these up as a pool that's going to be raid for important stuff. And we're going to set this up as just bulk backup until I get another 8 terabyte, which will probably go down in here. And then I will be able to do some other uh, backup and put those in raid as well. Cleaned everything up a little bit. Took some cables that didn't need to be in there out. I will eventually go ahead and swap this out too. It doesn't need a GPU. Uh, or it doesn't need any any kind of powerful GPU at all. But right now I just I put it in there so I can go ahead and configure everything. We'll take everything out soon. But uh, for the time being, yeah, let's see if we can't get TrueNAS installed on here. So at this point, I've gone ahead and put the ISO of TrueNAS scale onto this thumb drive. Got everything set up. I've got everything installed. Everything's nice, neat, and tidy in there. And it's time to go ahead and install TrueNAS onto the server. So in the end, we've got the server up and running. Everything's going fine. It's backing some stuff up even as we speak. And I shouldn't be recording while I'm doing that, but I think it's got to a stopping point. Um, works pretty easily i am still trying to implement a few things uh, some of the containers and everything that this version of it brags about being able to do easily part of it was easy part of it has not been we'll get there we'll figure it out i've been able to start backing up some of the files from i am number four my editing rig namely uh old raw video files from earlier years when youtube video stuff so i know that's working it's also accessible from other computers so i know that that part is working so in that we're, we're successful i'm able to monitor a bunch of stuff by the dashboard uh, the setup hasn't been too difficult uh, a little bit of a learning curve i'm sure there's going to be more but there there is a great resource of, of people out there that a lot of people are using this there's a reddit there's youtube videos there's a website there's a community that that regularly posts things uh, to those sites and to those forums that there's a ton of information and knowledge and it's completely open source. So is it the ideal solution for right now? 
I don't know. It, it might be. It's better than me just drag and dropping a, a file folder. What I would like to eventually get to is to auto backup some things. And I'm sure there's got to be a container on there somewhere that will do uh, an auto backup of, of some files for me. I just haven't found it yet, but I will. And um, yeah, so the, the versatility and knowing that it's there and knowing that it's in a safe spot and eventually that I will be able to access that from off off premises or from somewhere else say i go to my sister's house i won't be able to i won't worry about trying to edit videos and leave assets behind because uh i'll be able to get to them if i happen to do that should be uh should be a pretty good working solution anyway I, thanks for going along with the ride i know this has been kind of weird and convoluted i've been threatening to do this for a while i just things just didn't i they didn't line up or i was afraid to do it and i just finally took the plunge and decided you know what it, I need to go ahead and do it and set it up for my own sanity, and I'm glad I'm doing it because now it, it makes me a little bit less leery about changing from a system that's got a bunch of my files on it with some backup to another system that has hard drives in it that have other files from some backup, and now I can consolidate all that together and I won't have any problem trying to switch everything over. So it'll make me feel a lot better getting that part done, everything in one spot, and I don't have to worry about what drive was that on again, or do I need that, or do I have it backed up somewhere? It, it's all going to take care of itself. I do have, like I said, I've got a, a, a do have a backup for some stuff, but it'll be nice to get that off of there as well. I, I'm working with a WD My Cloud. Um, not the most efficient in the world. It is okay. Part of the problem with that is uh, anybody that might be familiar with that or not. Now it's a web interface instead of the little app. The app was great uh, because you could assign certain things or certain users to back up automatically. Uh, the web app doesn't seem to be as versatile doing that. So, uh, yeah, not, not real thrilled with that. And it's nice to be able to do something else to get kind of away from that because that was uh, that had a limited amount of space on it. In any case, we're, we've got that taken care of. We're moving away from it, and I can finally get that monkey off my back. I can feel better about having a good work, workable solution that I feel good about, that I don't have to worry if I'm going to lose data or files due to stupidity, uh, random acts of Mother Nature, or whatever the case may be, that I'll be protected in pretty good shape. So, uh, yeah. So that's it for this one. That's it for the server. There are other things going on. Obviously, Cool Blue is going to be taken care of. I've got a computer I'm working on for Damien. I got some other stuff. I am now that I am working with a, an external server. I'm going to have to set up a VPN. So uh, I have a Raspberry Pi that probably is going to be perfect for that. So we'll have to see what other trouble I can get into as far as that's concerned. So if you're not already subscribed, you're interested in any of that, please do go ahead and subscribe. Trying to make it to a thousand by the end of the year. I think that's a doable goal with you guys' help. If you found the video helpful at all or interesting or had more questions than you started with or whatever the deal is, or maybe even thinking about doing a home server yourself, uh, you know, hit the like button. And if not, I understand completely. I totally get it. But in any case, uh, don't forget to visit me on the other socials. Uh, starting streaming again on that purple channel. We're going to kick off the Discord server again, get some other things going on. I've got a tech blog on my website, a non-tech blog on buymeacoffee.com. Uh, my hands are full. I'm busy, 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 but it's going to all be worth it. So, yeah. But if you don't do anything else, do me one favor, just one, and that's be good to each other. Be kind. Smile, wave, hold the door open, say good morning, something, anything, greet somebody. That one kind gesture you do might make somebody's entire day. You just never know. So do that for me, okay? And until I get myself into something I got no business getting into, I'll see you later.